Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, everybody. I didn't hear walaikum salam. What a Batamese thing to do. Okay, okay. So, now we're in section three. Part three is the world all around you. Allah says, wa ayatul lahumul ardul mayta, and a miraculous sign for them is the dead earth. What does that have to do with the previous ayah? The previous ayah was everybody will be gathered before Allah, be having to present themselves. And by the way, the easiest way to remember that Allah will take your dead bodies and bring them back to life will be the, the dead earth. He says, Ahyaynaha, we give it life again. Wa akhrajna minha habban. And we bring seeds out from it. Faminhu yakulun, from which they eat. What an incredible thing to say. You are all going to be brought before me on judgment day. And by the way, an incredible sign for you to think about that is the earth that brings out seeds that you eat from. In other words, when you eat roti in the morning, when you eat a bagel, when you eat bread, when you eat like salad, when you eat a fruit, you are eating a reminder of judgment day. You are eating exactly what is going to be re resurrected. This is resurrection. It's a product of resurrection, isn't it? And by the way, there are seeds. Because Allah highlighted seeds. And for many fruits, when you eat them, what gets stuck in your mouth? Seeds. The seed sticks out like it's sticking out, like it's telling you, judgment day, by the way. Don't just enjoy the fruit. Here's the seed, like you. Every time you eat a fruit, it's like a khutbah. <laughs> and it's amazing that in artificial fruits, genetically modified fruits, there aren't any seeds. Isn't that crazy? Like naturally you're supposed to experience the uncomfort of seeds, the discomfort of seeds, because it's supposed to remind you of something. SubhanAllah. The ultimate reminder goes down our throats every day. Then Allah says here, you know, some, a concept He began with way back. He said, you know, inna nahnu nuhil mawta. We're the ones who give life to the dead. And now again, the earth is dead and we're going to bring it back to life. Now here, the other thing I want you to understand is that when Allah talks about nature in the Qur'an, it's never talked about in isolation. This is a really hard concept to understand, but for people who reflect and think deeply, it becomes easy. So stay with me, okay? When Allah talks about nature, it is not only talking about nature. When Allah talks about the sky, He's not only talking about the sky. When He's talking about rain, He's not only talking about the rain. When He's talking about the earth, He's not only talking about the earth. Here He's talking about the earth, bringing life again, but it's actually talking about human beings coming back to life too. There needs to be a connection made between nature and you know, natural <coughs> reality and spiritual reality. That's what the Qur'an does constantly, constantly, constantly. They're inseparable from each other. Now along those lines, Allah says previously in the surah that there are people that are dead and He will bring them back to life like their hearts, their spiritual hearts were dead and He brought them back to life. Like that lone guy who became a believer. And that same lone guy who came from the far end of the city and not just became a believer in his private life, but actually became a contributor and helped others. Yes? Here he says, Allah brings the earth back to life. Just like he brought the believer back to life. But then he said, not only do I bring the earth back to life, I bring seeds from it that you consume, that you benefit from. Just like that believer who came back to life benefited others. There's a parallel being made between this earth and the believer. And this parallel is also found elsewhere in the Qur'an. Like in Surah Al-Fatih, the companions are compared to a fully grown crop. They're compared to a crop. Now, let's move on. وَجَعَلْنَا فِيهَا جَنَّاتٍ Oh, I love this part. We put gardens in the earth. Made up of, made up of date palms. And we put gardens on the earth made up of grapes. And we made all manner of springs, water springs gush out of the earth. Rivers came out of the earth, waterfalls came out of the earth. Now this imagery, I want you to think, just play the video in your head. Palm trees, vineyards, waterfalls. Is this something that Qur'an talks about in other contexts? When does the Qur'an talk about palm trees and vineyards and waterfalls? When it's describing paradise, isn't it? Now the exact same language is being used to describe this world. Why? Because this world is supposed to be a preview for Jannah. As a matter of fact, 
Jannah is not, by the way, Jannah is a spiritual truth, yes? Jannah is a spiritual truth. But palm trees and waterfalls and grapes, these are material, physical truths. I told you, every time Allah talks about a physical truth, He is tying it to a spiritual truth. Now, I want you to understand this connection. Jannah would not be motivating if Allah did not describe it in words that describe dunya. I'll say that again. Jannah would not be motivation if Allah did not describe it in worldly terms. If Allah did not say, وَفَاكِهَةٍ مِمَّا يَتَخَيَّرُونَ They will have fruits that they get to pick from. Hmm. Oh. Hello. وَلَحْمِ طَيْرٍ مِمَّا يَشْتَهُونَ And flesh of bird that they are going to love. They're going to bite some of that chicken and go, mm hmm. Are ha ha, pass that over. They're going to like to recline on beautiful couches. Oh. Now, I can't, if you have no idea what a delicious fruit is, if you have no clue what a delicious drink is, if you have no idea what a palm tree looks like, what a waterfall looks like, then all of these ayat about Jannah are irrelevant. They don't mean anything to you. As a matter of fact, those things only have some significance because of what Allah put on this earth. Even though the spiritual truth of Jannah is far more enhanced than anything you've seen in this world. مَا لَا عَيْنٌ رَأَتْ وَلَا أُذُنٌ سَمِعَتْ وَمَا خَطَرَ عَلَىٰ قَلْبِ بَشَرْ No eye has ever seen, no ear has ever heard, no imagination, no heart has ever seen, imagined. It's never come. Yet still, there's a preview. There's a preview. So in the previous ayah, Allah used the earth to give us a picture of a believer. And in this ayah, Allah is giving, where does the believer go? Into Jannah. And He uses the palm tree and all of these things to describe really the scene of Jannah. Basically saying, look, why don't you want to go to Jannah? Haven't I given you a preview? Doesn't that make you want to go more? You should want to go there. Just because of what you've seen in dunya. You should go to beautiful places in the world like a waterfall and say, if Allah did this in dunya, wow, what's He going to do in Jannah? You go to in front of a beautiful mountain, you sit by palm trees. Palm trees are so cool. Just sitting by them. It's just, you feel relaxed. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's, it's not the drugs that make California relaxing. <laughs> it's the palm trees. Something about palm trees. I don't, I, 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 I don't like the weather in Houston, I'll tell you now. I don't like the weather in Houston. Just like I don't like the weather in Karachi. <laughs> but I do like something here on the highway. Next to the big tire shop, there's always a palm tree there. Palm tree just makes me happy. Especially when you come from Dallas. Or you, you have shrubs. You know? <laughs> you see palm tree, you just get happy. It's a sign of just something exotic. I don't know. You know? So we did all of this so they can just eat from its fruit? That's it? You think I made all of this so you can just cow pio mazekaro? That's all you want to do? So that they may eat from its fruit. وَمَا عَمِلَتْهُ أَيْدِيهِمْ And their hands didn't make these fruits. And by the way, عَمِلَتْ هُ فَهُنَاكَ نِقَاشْ عِنْدَ الْمُفَسِّرِينَ مَا هُوَ الضَّمِيرِ إِلَى مَا يَعُودِ Where does the pronoun go back to in who? I'll make it easy English for you. They say that the word who goes back to the springs of water coming out. So that they can eat from the fruits of the water that he produce, brings out. And they didn't make the water with their own hands. Of all the things human beings can do, they can plant the seed with their own hand, they can dig with their own hand, but the water that comes out of the earth is not their doing. And this is significant because a, spirit, a physical truth is always tied to a spiritual truth. And water in the Qur'an is compared to the Qur'an itself. Water is compared to the Qur'an itself. Qur'an comes from the sky, and what else comes from the sky? Water comes from the sky. Qur'an brings the dead hearts back to life, Water brings the dead earth back to life. So water is constantly compared with the Qur'an. And water is completely pure. It purifies. It, is not, it doesn't need to be pure itself. It is the thing that purifies everything else. That's how purity is attained on this earth. And the book of Allah is in and of itself pure and it purifies people. Yuzakihim. It purifies them. So water is always compared to the Qur'an. And he says now, so they can eat from its fruits, the benefits of the water. But they didn't make the water with their own hands. Just like in the beginning of the, Qur the surah, the Qur'an is not the work of a human being. 
Just like the Quran is not the work. See how things tie together? It's mind-blowing stuff, man. It's just mind-blowing stuff. And I study it and I get so happy and then I get so mad. I get, why didn't I know this? This is so epic. And then he says, Afala yashkurun. Then, oh, then are they not grateful? Now when you get to the end of this ayah, are they not grateful? You realize that Allah is not just asking me to be grateful for fruits. He's asking me to be grateful for the physical truth. But He's also making me grateful for what? The spiritual truth to which it is tied. The Book of Allah. The Book of Allah. You know in, in, the, in the ayah, شَهْرُ رَمَضَانَ الَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنَ Those ayat, right? لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ So you can be grateful. Grateful for what? For the Qur'an. Because it's the month of the Qur'an. The whole exercise of Ramadan is so you can appreciate the Qur'an. That's all it's for. It's actually not for pakoda and samosa. <laughs> Some people think that's the Hanafi opinion. Astaghfirullah <laughs> al Uh Uh-uh. The purpose of Ramadan is actually to celebrate the Qur'an. That's all it is. So you can become grateful for what you have. Allah. Now, water is not their doing, like revelation is not their doing. Water brings life. Revelation brings life. Water is the source of, the, the water, because it's compared to the word of Allah, water resurrects on the earth. And the word of Allah will one day resurrect on the earth. Kun fayakun. Subhanallah. Now, we're going to go to the perfection of Allah now. Allah can't be compared to anyone. And Allah created this creature like water, and there's nothing you can compare to it. He says, Subhanallah, khalaqa lazwaja kullaha. So commonly mistranslated, but I'll translate it in a, in a Pindu way first, and then I'll translate it fixed way. How perfect is the one who created spouses, pairs of all kinds. Pindu translation, he created everything in pairs. That is the Rawal Pindi translation in English. Sorry, Rawal Pindi. My nani's from Rawal Pindi, okay, relax. Like, I was on Rawal Pindi. I'm leaving. <laughs> relax, auntie, it's okay. It's okay. So he created spouses of all kinds. Not spouses or pairs of everything, but pairs from all kinds of things. Mimma tumbitul ard from what comes out of the earth, women and fusihim, and even from within themselves, women by la and out of things they don't even know. Allah created all kinds of pairs. Now somebody emailed me, brother, Quran says everything is created in pairs. What about amoeba? <laughs> what about a virus? What about you know unicellular organisms? I'm like, yeah, please. What? <sighs> There's so many words that I've heard my uncle say in Punjabi that come in my head. I don't even speak Punjabi. But like words like Uluda Partha, or like, you know, they just, they just come in my head when I read those emails. I don't want to get angry at this person because you're not supposed to be angry. But some questions are just so epic. Now the Quran is being undone by amoeba. And he attached a, like a JPEG file in case I didn't know what it looked like. Allah made all kinds of things in pairs. And azwaj doesn't just mean pairs. Azwaj also means groups that complement each other. Azwaj is used in the Quran like that. Mamatta'na bihi azwajan minhum. Not not pairs but groups. Kuntum azwajan thalatha. You are in three groups that complement each other. Each group complements its own members. It's not pairs. Allah things made complementary is what he's saying. Allah things made complement each other. Entire ecosystems complement each other. Planets complement each other. Galaxies complement each other. Human body, the human body parts complement each other. Spouses complement each other. Families complement each other. Neighborhoods complement each other. Countries complement each other, complete each other. All of this is part of al-azwaja kullaha. From within what comes out of the earth too. You know, sometimes it's not just two kinds of apples and two kinds of oranges and... Not like that. That may be true, but also, you know, there are certain environments where certain plants have to grow and other plants can only grow in the neighborhood of those plants. They can't grow on their own. They need other plants to provide them shade, or provide them moisture, or provide them other things. And some plants can only grow on top of other plants. And some birds can only live in some kinds of trees. They are in a, a zawj with that tree. 
This is what Allah did. Things that need each other. He's so perfect. He made everything need everything else. He's the one who doesn't need anyone. That's the point he's making. Look around you. Look at everything and it needs everything else. Look at how the earth needs the clouds. Look at how the clouds need the winds. Look at how the earth needs the sun and it needs the moon. And they need each other. And Subhanallah. And within themselves, within you, he made things that need other things. He made the pair, obvious pair people talk about is the male and the female. But this goes way beyond that. This is way beyond that. Even though that's a huge, significant, you know, Why did he make spouses out of you? So you can find peace with each other. <laughs> that's enough commentary on that. <laughs> I'm going to move on. <laughs> but then, there's even in, there are pairs and dualities and contradictions, complementary contradictions inside of me. فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا He put inside me the urge to just do whatever I want. And then he put inside me the urge to no, hold back and just don't go crazy. He put inside me enthusiasm, and he put inside me restraint. He put inside me, he gave me this body, and he gave me this ruh. He complimented, there's a pair inside, I'm made of a pair. I'm not this body, I'm this ruh, but I'm also this body. He made a pair of ruh, he gave me a qalb, a heart that has, the, uh, that can have Allah's taqwa, that can have his iman, that can have the fear of Allah. But then he gave me a mind too. He gave me emotions here, he gave me thought here. He paired those two up. And that's why a message has to be emotionally appealing and intellectually clear. Because I'm made of a pair myself. He gave this message, he, he gave guidance, but he paired it up. He paired the message with the messenger. You can't just have one. Then he made the night and he made the day. Then he made this life. He made this life, this world, and these palm trees, and these grapes, and these waterfalls. And he paired them in the Qur'an. He paired them with what? The trees in Jannah, and the waterfalls in Jannah, and the grapes in Jannah, and the, the you know, chicken salad in Jannah. <laughs> he paired all of it. It's all paired. That's what he does. The only one that doesn't need a pair, doesn't need a compliment, is what? It's, who? it's Allah, that's it. That's why in the beginning, Subhanallah khalaq al azwaj. How perfect is the one who made things that need each other? Because he's the only one who doesn't. And it all ties together when you realize that this life is paired with the next. That's what I mean. When Allah talks about things from this world, they are always tied to a spiritual truth from the next world. Wa ayatul lahumul layl. I love this one. Um, um, a, a, something to ponder for them, something to think about for them, a significant sign for them is the night. نَسْلَخُ مِنْهُ nahar. We pull the day out of it. Did you know that in the Qur'an, Allah compares misguidance to night? And He compares guidance to what? Day. Now day and night are a physical phenomenon, but again, we're gonna tie it to a spiritual truth. What is the spiritual truth? Night is similar to misguidance, you know, ظلام. مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى nur. From darknesses to, to light. Darknesses are night. Light is day. Right? Allah says, a sign for them is the night. And we pull the day out from it. Just like the Arabs. فَهُمْ غَافِلُونَ مَا أُنذِرَ أَبَاؤُهُمْ For generations these people were in the night. And pulled out of from within them, yanked out of them, is this messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who Allah gave the light so they can see the light of day. So when they think about night and day, they should think about how Allah has pulled them out of darkness into light through the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa Even this is tied to a spiritual truth. نَسْلَخُ مِنْهُ nahar. But then he ends the ayah so beautifully, he says, فَإِذَا هُمْ مُظْلِمُونَ Then all of a sudden they, go, they, they get dark themselves. They go into the dark themselves. مُظْلِمُونَ to be dark. Wait, it was just day. It was just day. They should be munarun. They should be lit up. Munawwarun. But he says, Mudlimun. Why? Day came out, Quran came out, it's brilliant, it's undeniable, and yet you want to dig yourself in a hole and hide in the dark. Ah, that must be because you're covered from above and there's a wall in front of you and there's a wall behind you and light can't get in. Where did I get that from? The beginning. We pull the day out and they're still in the dark. And all of a sudden they're in the dark. 
And then he says, by the way, فَإِذَا Some even commented that فَإِذَا هُمْ مُظْلِمُونَ Because he doesn't say فَإِذَا هُمْ يُظْلِمُونَ He says فَإِذَا هُمْ مُظْلِمُونَ If it was يُظْلِمُونَ They're gonna be in the night temporarily, then they'll be the next day. But he uses the word مُظْلِمُونَ which is permanent. Because he's going from the material example of night and day and switching over to the spiritual truth, which means they're gonna stay in the dark. فَهُمْ لَا يُبْصِرُونَ وَسَوَاءٌ عَلَيْهِمْ أَنذَرْتَهُمْ أَمْ لَمْ تُنذِرْهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ That's why it's مُظْلِمُونَ They're just gonna stay in the dark. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thanks for watching these videos. If you'd like to continue to support Quran Weekly, please click the link in this video.